Okay, once we have three ratios or four set up where we're trying to find out if they're equivalent to each other, we can do a couple of different things. One of the things we can do is we can reduce the ratios using the same rules you guys know for equivalent fractions, we also work with equivalent ratios. We're trying to determine if these three are equivalent to each other. So if I reduced these, I could take a 7 out of both 7 and 21, couldn't I? And that would reduce down to 1 over 3. I can take an 8 out of both of these, and it would reduce down to 1 over 3. And now I'm hoping I can get the 12 down to 1 third. And if I divide 12 by 12 and 36 by 12, I also get 1 third. So these are equivalent to each other, yes? Sometimes it's not that easy. They're not numbers that you're familiar with how the facts work. And another way to do this is to use cross multiplication. So I could cross multiply 7 times 24, and I could cross multiply 8 times 21. And if those numbers come out the same, I can start feeling pretty confident that this is going to work. But I also have to check the other ratio. So I'm going to cross multiply this set and this set. It ends up looking like a big crazy crisscross mash. But as long as they work, let me see if this calculator, there we go. So if I do 7 times 24, I got 168. So now I'm hoping that 21 times 8 is also 168. Do you see how that worked? Mm -hmm. But then I have to clear it and I have to do the other set. So I'm going to do 24 times 12. And it doesn't have to be 168. It has to match 8 times 36. Okay? So I'm going to try 8 times 36 and I get 288. So there's two different ways that I've checked to make sure that these are equivalent to each other, which means that they are proportional, okay? Um, in your work today, you guys are working out of the book on 4-8. Your problems are on page 250, and you're doing numbers 1 through 8. And we start the work for number 1 together on the first video, okay?